All right, guys, before we start the video, I just wanted to shout out that we are recruiting for our guild on the NA East servers for Throne and Liberty Global Release. If you guys are looking for a semi-hardcore to hardcore PvP experience, head over to my Discord, go to over to the important tab, TNL Guild Info, and you guys can see a form you guys can fill out. Hope to see you guys on the global release and enjoy the video. Yo, what's up, guys? And Vulnerable here. So... I've previously talked about all of the PvP things you can do in this game, what kind of a PvP overview of all the activities. Uh, now it is time to talk about PvE and an overview of all the PvE activities for Endgame and what you can do in this game. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, let's quickly go over your daily and weekly contracts. So your daily and weekly contracts are basically daily and weekly quests that give you great progression rewards. So right now we are in Herba Village. If you're level 50 and you're uh, playing on the global servers, the only places where you'll be doing contracts, you won't be over here yet. You'll be doing Watchers Post contracts or Pure Light Tower, depending on what you prefer. But anyhow, for the demonstration of the video, I'll be in Herba Village. You're going to go over to your contract manager and every day you will get 10 contracts. So basically you can pick up 10 of these missions. Now, for the ones I wouldn't recommend picking up is going to be the rare base material selection chests and most likely the rare parchments. Don't pick them up. If you really need the rare parchments, there's definitely an option. But again, I just really wouldn't recommend picking up. I would recommend you pick up as many rare polished crystals as uh, possible. As these are used for basically everything in the game and upgrading your gear and is a pretty big bottleneck. But you can also look into getting some of the ores, like Rubik's ores, if you really want to max your weapon as fast as possible and you have enough of these crystals. Just keep in mind, when you're upgrading stuff, you use these for every single thing. That is why I recommend, you know, picking these up as much as possible. Now, also, when you do your contracts, you're going to get a currency, right? So you're going to go to your contract coin merchant over here or wherever he is in uh, whatever town, right? And you're going to see a wide variety of uh, items to purchase here. Now... The only items I would never recommend you purchase are basically the ores. I think these ores are way too expensive. If you have like over a million contract coins, then maybe you can consider buying these ores, but I just believe they're way too expensive. What I do recommend in, in priority is definitely the Mystic Keys. It's probably the number one prior. You, if you're doing fishing, you want a fishing bait chest. If you don't have a fishing rod, you can always buy a fishing bamboo rod as well. Um, and then if you scroll down here, you've got trade extraction stones. These are the one way you're going to make a lot of Lucent. Uh, which is the kind of marketplace auction house currency. Rune hammers are also pretty good. If you do need a lot of rune hammers, you can look into buying these as well. I wouldn't say it's a main prior, but when you get to that point of the game, these are pretty important. These are used for runes. Enchanted ink. I won't go too much into this whole system because it's pretty like, you have to understand what's like happening in the game and the, the market and stuff. But you can basically make these blank lithographs with the enchanted ink. And then you can convert any sort of weapon back into a lithograph that you can recraft it. Again, I'm not going into too much detail about this. It's more of an advanced system, but this is definitely worth buying if you get into this. And if you have some extra contract coins, um, you perhaps can buy and gamble with some pouches. Now to quickly go over your weekly uh, contracts, you go over to your Sundry's Merchant in the city and you're going to see these new, uh, two things that are sold out because I've purchased them already. Uh, you can buy these weekly, basically weekly limit of six for these and weekly limit of three. I'm not sure what you're going to have available on global, but um, yeah, for us on KR, we have access uh, to these two. So this one over here is basically going to give you uh, a contract scroll for each open world dungeon. That's what I mean with, I don't know if this is going to be available on global because you won't have access to the open world dungeons, um, all of them for a while. Anyhow, this will, each chest will give you one of each scroll for each one, each giant dungeon. And basically like uh, a scroll will give you kind of a, a quest to kill a bunch of mobs, do something specific in an open world dungeon, and it can give you some pretty good rewards. And for this scroll over here is for the Tidal's Tower, which I'm about to go over in a second here. Also, a quick mention, uh, don't forget to buy your daily limit of, uh, like, for example, eggs, golden rye, and honey, as this is used for cooking. All right, to smoothly transition into the next piece of content, this is not, I would say, very major PV content, but it's definitely something uh, worth mentioning. So, if we press escape and go to secret dungeons, you've got Tidal's Tower and you've got Gate of Infinity. So, if you haven't completed your Tidal's Tower, make sure you do that, you'll get a bunch of good rewards. Uh, these are basically just bosses and they've got little puzzles to them sometimes that you do. Uh, as you go down to floor 20. When you're max level, this is pretty relatively easy in my opinion. Um, but yeah, once you've completed that, you're going to get these weekly uh, scrolls I talked about from the Sundry's Merchant. And it's going to give you a random like floor that you need to uh, kill the boss in. And you get a bunch of extra rewards. So that's cool. 
The main thing to mention here is the Gate of Infinity. So uh, every so often they're going to give you a new boss and make sure that you guys get three stars or try to get as high health or try to get as many stars as possible on each of these bosses here. Once again, these will rotate every so often, so make sure you get your rewards. The rewards from here are pretty good, so keep that in mind. Now on the topic of dungeons, you've got yourself your instant dungeons or your dimension circles. All right, so if you look over on the left here, we've got your leveling dungeons over here, and you've got your tier one dungeons, your tier two dungeons, and then your tier three dungeons. I wouldn't worry too much about your tier one and tier threes as they are content later down the line. Um, I would definitely be focusing more on your tier one dungeons and I guess your leveling dungeons. Now dungeons are kind of like your typical, if you've played other MMORPGs, you kind of go through an instance dungeon with six people and you just clear mobs, you clear bosses, mini bosses, and at the end, you open a chest to get some loot. Now, if we look at tier one dungeons over here, it says 300 tokens on the bottom right. If we look at the top here, we have uh, at the moment 1,050. And you can see on the text at the bottom, it says time remaining until next charge at 900 after 12 hours. Basically, what happens is every day, you're going to get 900 tokens. And so realistically, every day, you can do up to three dungeons. You could do more than three dungeons, you just can't get loot, for example. When you open the chest towards the end and you get a chance of getting some really good loot from here, it will consume the 300 tokens. But when it comes to dungeons, yeah, you've got your party matchmaking where you can random queue, you'll get extra rewards for doing party queuing, um, and you also, also get a bit of extra damage and buffs. Or you can go to the party board and, you know, pre-create a party uh, from other servers. This is cross server, so you can party queue with anyone. Uh, relatively, these dungeons are pretty simple. There are some mechanics to them to understand, so you might get a few wipes here and there on some of these dungeons, but relatively, they're pretty simple. You're also going to see on the top left a challenge dimensional circle. Now, in this start for global, you won't need to worry about this because this is basically tied to the tier two dungeons. And of course, you won't have those for a while unless they rework something for the global milestones. Now, the way these work is basically you've got all the way up to 30 tiers and it becomes harder and harder with more mechanics the higher tiers you go. These dungeons are unlimited. You can do as many as you want. And the main thing you're going to be doing is farming runes from this, which is a whole different system. I've got a video on, you can go check out my YouTube. But yeah, these are basically your end end game kind of uh, dungeons whenever you get to this. There's also a seasonal ranking uh, over here and you get special rewards for ranking and all that good stuff. So there's actually a competitive like PVE scene in a way. But yeah, every week, these two dungeons will rotate into two different tier two dungeons. Um, and that's kind of how it works. If you've done Mythic Plus Dungeons from World of Warcraft, it basically works like that in a way. All right, for the last piece of dungeon content, which is your open world dungeons. Now, there's a few of these around the world. For example, we are at the Crimson Manor uh, open world dungeon. There's also, for example, the Picant Mansion, and there's a bunch of other dungeons like Ant's Nest. So there's plenty of these dungeons. Um, at nighttime, they do become PvP, um, but during the daytime, they are PvE. And basically what you're going to be doing is spending this currency at the top right called Abyssal Contract Tokens to farm mobs and get loot. You're going to be doing this usually in groups of six as it gives you more loot and it's just more efficient in general. You can solo farm depending on your gear and class, but I definitely recommend you do it with six people. Now, open world dungeons are exactly what I say they are. Open world dungeons. There's no loading screens, and there's usually multiple floors to these dungeons. These dungeons are usually quite massive, as for example, we can go over to this teleporter. For example, this is floor two. As you can see, a huge grind spot over here. And this is floor three, and this, of course, is massive as well. Open world dungeon farming is going to be very important when it comes to progression as it literally has drops that affect every single progression system in the game. So make sure you don't cap out on your tokens and you don't waste tokens. Make sure you're uh, spending your tokens wisely and stuff. If we take a look, for example, we got a Crimson Manor. This is probably the most end game dungeon in the game itself. We've got a monster info. We get to see a bunch of these monsters here. We can click on one and we can see the loot that they drop. As you can see, they drop uh, armor pieces, weapons. Sometimes they're actually exclusive to the open world dungeon itself. They also drop all these gems, these marins, rubrics, this very important stuff. You can either sell it or use for progression. And you also got your precious parchments, your polished crystals, even more ore down here. Um, and just there's so much stuff, even abyssal aggregates and some other materials for consumables. You even have gems. 
So literally every progression system in the game, these open world dungeons will drop. Now you may be wondering, where do I get Abyssal Contract Tokens? Abyssal Contract Tokens are dropped from basically everywhere. Events, uh, your daily contracts, dungeons, or your instant dungeons rather. And there's a few other places here and there, for example, like Mystic Orbs, and uh, mostly everything in the game will give you Abyssal Contract Tokens, so keep your eyes out on how many tokens you have, and make sure to farm your open world dungeons in a party of six. All right, let's quickly go everything when it comes to guild PV in this game. So if we go over to this portal over here, you're going to have access to some basically weekly boss kills, as you can see down here. Now, depending on your guild, you're going to get more weekly boss kills and you're going to have access to more guilds. I'm in temporary guild by myself right now. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I can only do Morokai and you can kill these bosses with your guild and basically get guild uh, raid boss loot. And then you can distribute that to your members of your guild. These are also pretty important to do uh, weekly, make sure everyone's there because you get these Raid Marshal tokens and these are used to guarantee, uh, get a box that gives you whatever piece of boss loot you want. They also drop gems and precious crystals and all this good stuff, so uh, yeah, keep that in mind. The next side piece of content when it comes to guilds is going to be your guild contracts. Now, as you can see here, it says Raid Temple of Silveth. This is an open world dungeon. Um, you got Wolf Hunting Contest, one of the events, and you got Humanoids. Uh, generally, you want to complete these to level up your guild and get activity points. All right, next piece of content we're going to be talking about is the peaceful and co-op uh, world events. If you're not interested in going to the Dominion events, which are the PvP events, or the Guild events, which are also the uh, PvP events, um, you can go to Peace or Co-op. Now, Peace is basically, there are events throughout the world, and you get to basically farm mobs to get a certain currency, or whatever the event uh, kind of requires you to do, then you can turn it in for yourself to get high rankings to get some rewards. And Cooperative is basically, while well, working together. Now, in general, most of the player base don't go to these events. They usually go to the Dominion events as they've got slightly better rewards. But in general, the event system in this game is pretty lackluster when it comes to rewards. But if you want to do peaceful events and cold events, go ahead. You've got that option. And then for your last piece of PvE content, which is your Peace World Bosses. Now, once again, I've talked about Conflict World Bosses in the PvP video version of this. But unlike the Peace events, a lot of people will go to Peace World Bosses. Basically, what will happen is you will go to a boss arena and there's going to be multiple portals that spawn for their own instance so it doesn't overcrowd basically the boss area. You uh, attack the world boss with a bunch of people and you have a chance of getting boss loot. Now, honestly, mostly it's scaled towards if you deal more damage, you have a higher chance of getting loot. It does take an account of like healing and other stuff, but mostly it's damage. A lot of people will actually go to peace events first, especially PvP periods. They'll go to peace events first, then they will go to conflict events after. As conflict events usually last quite a while as it's back and forth PvP. Uh, they usually go to peace events first just to get some, you know, uh, an extra chance of loot and you always get kind of a bit of extra guaranteed piece of loot as well. So no matter, even if you don't get a drop, you still uh, get, you know, guaranteed little piece of um, uh, progression. All right, guys, so those are the main PvE kind of systems in Throne of Liberty. I would say this game is definitely weighing towards the, the PvP side, but in the future, they have uh, awesome, great content that's coming to the game, like 12-man uh, raids, for example. And there's definitely going to be some more future PvE content as they're trying to put a lot of focus as well into the PvE content in this game. But if you guys haven't seen the PvP version of this video, go check it out on my channel. Thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to check out the Twitch as I stream uh, mostly every single day or every other day. Don't forget to check out the Discord as we have a few slots left in FTP for the NA East Hardcore PvP Guild. Once again guys, thanks for watching and peace out.